Okay, we're ready to go again. Today's demo is going to be a mortar and pestle. Um, it's made out of maple. If you're going to make one of these, you need to make it out of a wood that's it's as hard as possible because in its use, uh, there's a lot of wear. So you want it out of the harder wood so it's going to last longer. We've put a decorative foot on it just for show. Um, the key to this, and the reason that we use it uh, at this place in the semester, is because this forces you to match contours. The inside of the, the mortar has to match the pestle. So that when it's in use, uh, the, the surfaces are actually touching one another for their entire uh, length. So that's very important. Now, to accomplish that, you use templates. Now, these templates um, are just a guide. You have to cut it yourself to match these templates. Now, the, uh, the, the pestle ball on the end is actually determined by this uh, template. And you have to cut it in such a way that the contour on the pestle matches the contour on the template. And the same for the mortar. You insert this in. It should go in where the shoulders are fitting right even with the top of the mortar and the contour on the inside it's difficult to see but the contour on the inside matches the contour of the template and that's going to be the project for today uh, we will show it from start to finish as usual and when you wind up you will have um, a project that you can actually use. Um, I hope you enjoy it and we'll get started in just a moment. Okay, we have our blank in the chuck. We're starting with a piece that's about three and three quarters square and about three and three quarters long. It's a little bit bigger than the blank that's mentioned in the written material but that's okay. We're going to turn it down to the correct dimensions before we're done. So the first step is going to be to turn it round and we're just going just down to round and stop. So, we now have our blank turned round. The next step we need to do is turn a recess on the end. Now, before we can do that, we need to square up this end. Um, it's not quite square, there's a little wobble to it, so we'll take a parting tool and we'll square that up. We now have our end squared up. The next step is going to be to cut that recess and I'll change the camera angle and you'll be able to see that a little bit better. Now 
As normal, the first thing we're going to need to do is to find the center. And we'll just do that with a pencil while the machine is running. And that locates our center. Now we can measure from that to get the diameter that we want. Now remember, you have to cut this recess to match the chuck that you will be using. And it's not always the same, and there's no such thing as a standard size recess. You have to cut it to match the one that you're going to be using. Now, the one that I will use on here, I already know, is about two inches. So we just set it up using our center as a reference. And then we can simply scribe the circle and that's going to be our recess. Now we cut that with the parting tool Now the depth that you cut your recess to, um, to a certain degree is up to you. You need at least 3 sixteenths. Uh, if you wanted to go a quarter of an inch, that would be okay. Um, but you need to be somewhere between 3 sixteenths and a quarter. <laughs> And now, as you remember, you'll need to uh, make the outside edge of your recess match your chuck jaws. Some chuck jaws have a dovetail, some do not. The one I'll be using has a dovetail, so I'll need to take my skew and make a cut in here to dovetail the inside of this. Now, as always, I need that cutting edge on the center. So you need to, just about every time you change tools, you need to change the height on your tool rest to match the tool that you're using. And we want to make sure that we get the handle angle over um, so that when we make that cut, we're going in at that angle. If we set the angle and then go in straight, we accomplish nothing. We have to go in at that angle. And usually just one pass is all that's needed. And now, our recess is complete. Um, what we need to do now is turn the piece around and mount it on the chuck. And I'll have to change the camera angle back to this side. And we'll do that and get set up for um, the next segment. Okay, we have this, the chuck on the lathe with the smaller jaws. And we have our recess cut. And we simply place the recess over the jaws and expand the jaws until it's secure. 
Now the first step here is going to be turn the rest of this round uh, with the roughing gouge. Now, we have our cylinder that's a consistent diameter, uh, but we're still well above the three and a quarter that we need. So we're going to turn this down to uh, exactly three and a quarter inches. We'll use a bowl gouge to do that. And this is currently a little under three and five eighths. And we need to go down to three and a quarter. So we're going to use the parting tool to cut a diameter on each end at three and a quarter. Now we'll turn our calipers down to three and a quarter. And then we'll have a, a gauge to go by. Now, we now have both our shoulders down to the three and a quarter inch mark, and we just use a bowl gouge to take out all of the material in between. Okay, so now we've got a smooth cylinder that's three and a quarter in diameter. Our next step is to cut it to length. We need a, a three inches from our recess. So we'll just make our mark. Transfer it all the way around. And then we just need to cut it off. And a good tool to do that would be the parting tool. And when it comes time to actually part this off, it's small enough. I'm not going to worry about trying to catch it. I'm just going to part it all the way off and let it go where it wants to go. So we now have our blank cut to the three inch length that we need and now we're ready to hollow it out and we'll change the uh, camera angle and I'll show you that. Okay, due to technical difficulties beyond my control, uh, the next segment that should have appeared in this video actually never got recorded. 
Now the good news is it wasn't a real critical piece. It's on our uh, mortise and when I first started hollowing this out I used a bowl gouge. I first used a little trick with the parting tool where we cut a lip, uh, a groove in the face and then we had a place to put the bowl gouge against and we would turn it and as we've said before you can only go so deep before it becomes impossible to stay on the bevel. Now that's all that we showed in the video that's missing and that's something that um, we have covered in other videos that you've already seen. It was done in the scoop exactly the same way. So rather than trying to re-record that one little segment, um, we're just going to move on without it. It's going to pick up with um, continuing the hollowing with the uh, carbide uh, hollowing tool. Now I've added a light so we'll be able to see inside as we begin to cut this and hopefully you'll get a feel for exactly how to use this tool. Now, as we begin to get into this, the first dimension we have to establish is the width. And we do that with the sides of our template. And I've deliberately made it a little bit narrow so it won't go in. I can look and see that I'm not touching the bottom, but it won't go in any further. So I need to bring these sides out a little bit. And we'll just continue doing that slowly until the sides of my template will go into the piece. Now I'm almost in, but I can see that I'm almost touching the bottom of my hole and I'm still about three quarters of an inch away. So know that I've got to start going a great deal deeper.
And now my template is all the way up. I'm touching the shoulder here and my contour looks uh, very good. Okay, so we will do a little bit of sanding in here and then we'll be ready to turn the outside. Now we'll slow it down to about 800 RPMs. Now we'll double check our fit with the template. And that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm happy with that. So now all we have to do now is turn the outside. Now I'm going to change the camera angle again for that and we'll proceed uh, into the next segment. Now our next step is going to be to draw a line at two and three eighths. And this will determine the location of the foot that we'll put on this just for decoration. Now we will use the parting tool and we will take this in to about two and three quarters of an inch. So uh, that'll establish the foot. And that's about the shape I'm looking for. And we'll simply use that spindle gouge just to turn this all the way in to a point. Now all we have to do now is sand um, this portion and we're ready to actually put the second blank up and turn the, the, the pestle that will be matched to the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and sand this off the camera and we'll get ready to turn the, the pestle and we'll move on to that in just a moment. Okay now we've got a inch and three quarter by six inch long blank in the chuck. I've already turned it round and I've turned it down to inch and a half in diameter for the whole length and we've already seen how to do that even in this demo so we won't show it. Uh, it's already been done we're going to mark at seven eighths of an inch. We're going to use the parting tool to take that diameter down to three quarters of an inch. And we're going to go right on the center of the line. Now we're at about 13 sixteenths, so we've got just a little bit more to go. Now that should be our three quarter inch line. So we have our three quarter inch diameter established in here. Now we're going to have to turn the head of our pestle to match our template. Now it's it has flat parts that are inch and a half apart then it has the curve that we're looking for so this should go right over this and it's just a little bit 
short. So we're going to take that down just a little bit. Now, that matches the diameter much better. Now, um, the first thing we'll do is start putting a curve on here with the bowl gouge. And we'll do that again just like we did the other template. We're going to go slowly. And we'll check often. Now we have to go back quite a bit more. Now, that contour is very, very close to our template. So I'm thinking that I've got what I want on this end. Then the rest of it is just turning the handle. Uh, there's nothing critical about the rest of it. So we've got our face, and we can just sand that just a little bit. And we'll double check, and we're good. So, the hardest part about turning this is over. The rest of it is just a matter of laying out the handle. And we want to leave about an eighth of an inch there. And we'll turn a curve that will go down. It'll uh, match the plans. And we'll do that with the bowl gouge. Now if this side is in the way, we can simply turn that down and get that out of our way as we move this curve on down to pair in with that three-quarter inch diameter that we have at the bottom. So now we have our curve there, and now it's just going to be a matter of laying out the rest of the handle and uh, turning it. Okay, now I've already laid out the lines that are shown on the plans. We went to this spot. This is the highest point in the handle. And this is where the ball on the end starts with a 7 8 inch diameter. that will actually be turned down to about a half. Now, all we have to do now, since this is the low point 
on the handle here and this is the high point. All we have to do is take off this uh, material and fare this curve into this height. And it's a fairly simple thing. Um, I'll show you exactly how I do it. Um, but it's just a matter of removing all the excess material. But we don't want to remove the material for the whole length. We want to go in increments. So we keep our material back here that's going to support this section out here and keep it from vibrating. So we'll start with the bow gout. Now that's got the most of the handle. This section here will turn a ball on the end of uh, the handle. So we're going to go ahead and sand all of this and then we'll be back in uh, just a minute and we'll see the, the last portion of it where we turn the ball. Okay, now we have our handle sanded and this entire portion is finished up here. All we have to do is turn the ball on the back. Now the first thing we have to do is turn this material down to about an inch in diameter. And we can do that either with a parting tool or with um, our bowl gouge. And I'll go ahead and use the parting tool. The last part of this ball is going to have to be sanded by hand once we cut it off. So, um, as I look, I'm a little bit long, so I'm going to take this down a little bit more. Now, we're going to take this and that's about as small as I want to go until I do just a little bit of sanding. Now, I can go ahead and part this all the way off, and we'll use the parting tool. We'll hold with one hand, and we'll come in here with the parting tool and just part it completely off. Okay. 
And now the remainder of it will just sand until it's nice and smooth. And that's pretty much how you do the pestle. Now, we will sand all of this, and then I'll show it to you one more time, and um, we'll continue in just a minute. Okay, and there we have it. There's our finished mortise and pestle. And as you can see, the pestle matches the contour in the bottom, so you can grind your herbs or whatever it is that you wanted to use this for. Um, the recess in the bottom just looks decorative um, and all we need to do is put some kind of finish on it and the best finish to use on something like this would be um, a butcher block finish. Uh, it won't get in the way, it'll soak into the wood a little bit and it'll protect it um, but it won't get in the way when it's actually being used. And once you do that, you've completed your project. I hope you enjoyed the demo as much as I did making it. And I will see you again soon.